Hey everyone, Ozzy Viking here for the next Star Wars Episode 8. Now, this time I was supposed to have Episode 7 review, which was like 35 minutes long. It was a massive rant, and uh, Disney's like, yeah, no, you can't put any footage in it. So I've decided to try to do a claim thing. Look, there's so many videos on here, can I do it? If they say no, I'll then go through the video I've got now and cut it out all the footage and basically have me the 30-minute long, the um, long thing. But for a shortened version for you guys, is basically Episode 7 was a 6 out of 10. It was unimaginative, uninspired, nostalgic film that only worked for people that have a hard-on for the original trilogy. And that's it. It was boring, um, basically. And it was the worst Star Wars film, I thought. Moving on to Episode 7, it is not. This film is amazing. But it's very, very divisive. I'll get to spoilers later on, but really, it is a divisive film. This, I'm still reeling. Like, I'm still thinking about this film. And it's kind of made me go, wow, this is, I did not expect this. But some of the things I didn't expect, I think, are a bit dumb. Um, I'm, I disagree with the critics. I don't think this is the best Star Wars film. I have to wait until episode nine comes out and see how it brings it all together. But so far, it's just... I don't know. I haven't thought about a film like this this hard since Revenge of the Sith in terms of it ending and I'm just like, whoa, what the hell? Is that what happened? Like, wow. It's it's powerful. It's a really powerful film. But some moments, like, there's a lot of Boba Fett moments. Let's put it that way. As in, a good character is just dead. I'm not going to say who, but like, and I guess somewhat spoilers in a way if you want to think that, but there's a lot of Boba Fett moments. So far, again, we've got episode nine. You know, stuff works like that, okay? Um... What works? First of all, Mark Hamill and Adam Driver steal the show. Their acting is superb. They are fantastic characters. Daisy Ridley's okay. She's a bit flat at times, um, to be truthful. Um, but she's getting there. She's getting there. She's actually, she's not too bad. Um, and, you know, Kerry Fisher's fantastic. And, you know, uh, Finn's really great. That's the played Finn. John Boyega and Poe Dameron's actor, which I can't remember right at this moment. And Rose, a new actress. Um, all great. There's some great set pieces and overall, but... Things to do with story, you, you kind of get to have to get into the spoiler part of things, but overall, it kind of feels like they gave you episode seven, and then Adam um, Ryan Johnson's like, Yeah, this is fucking shit. And he, he basically throws episode seven out the window. Everything you thought about episode seven is gone, it's out the window. He's basically gone, Nah, fuck it. At least that's what it feels like. Um, overall, as I am now, I think it's a nine, a solid nine, but. I have to wait and see how the next one kind of brings it on because I feel like this is a very divisive film. Fans are going to love this film and they're going to hate this film for what it does. I'm in the middle. Um, I like some of the things it did and I kind of don't like what some of the things it did, but I'm in the middle because we still got one more film to like bring it all together. But this is exactly what episode 7 should have been. This is its own thing done pretty damn well. So now I'm going to go to spoilers, um, so be warned, spoilers, we'll talk about the biggest death that I was like, wow, that, I never thought Disney would do that. So again, spoilers, if you want to hear this, go for it, but Snoke dying was interesting as shit, okay? Whew! So in this film, he's powerful, like, he shoots lightning, he force grips people, he literally force hurts people across space, and he's built up as this powerful, dark, um, creature... And then he just gets killed by Kylo, who basically gets Anakin's lightsaber, twists it around, and just... And then cuts him in half, like Darth Maul. Now, they might bring him back to life somehow in the third one, which I'm kind of hoping for, because he was kind of built up as this power. And we saw power. He had power. And then Kylo basically, like, he's been told to kill Rey. He's like, okay, I'll kill Rey. And he's kind of tricking Snoke while he goes... And just kills Snoke. And I was like... Really? You built up this next Sidious or this powerful Sith Lord and he was powerful and he just dies like that? On one end, it's cool because Kylo just takes over and he's the next Supreme Leader, which I was like, that's fucking awesome. Go Kylo. But on the other hand, it's like, really? Your big bad just dies? Another one is Phasma. Yeah, she comes in and she dies. She she gets beaten by Finn and she goes and falls down a fiery plant, which I guess they could bring her back, but I mean... She had half of her face just destroyed, basically. Or at least her, the, 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 her, the, um, her armor. And basically, pff, falls down the reactor. And yeah. Um, and then the last one, which I'm still on the fence about, is Luke. Luke dies, and I'm really fucking pissed off that he dies. But, they show the Force Ghost, and they give him power. Like, Force Ghosts can physically hurt you. 
Force Ghosts can literally create a lightsaber and cut you down if they wanted to. Like, you see Luke, before he dies, do this really awesome, uh, 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 badass, ultimate Grandmaster from the Extended Universe sort of thing, where he literally creates a copy of himself, and the copy fights Kylo physically, even hurting him. And it's basically like a Force projection ghost thing. And uh, we see Force Ghosts of Yoda wax Luke on the, on the head and stuff like that. So, it's interesting, because Luke... Luke is pretty strong. He's not the Grandmaster from the Extended Universe. I think we have to accept that, but... Wow. I, but I'm like, why did you kill him off? Why? I mean, I know they're probably going to bring him back as his fourth ghost and he's going to be badass, but I'm like, I would have loved a moment where... So far, it doesn't really go to episode 1 to 6, okay? This, these last episodes don't really feel like they're connected at all to episode 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's, I you know, things like... I'm hoping to see Anakin's ghost or Obi-Wan's ghost t telling, you know, Anakin talking to his son and daughter... I was kind of hoping there'd be more of that. Um, I was hoping that they'd, you know, touch on the Chosen One and stuff, but they don't. Like, we all thought, uh, well, I mean, again, they could change it in the third one, but so far, it doesn't seem to go the way we want. Like, Rey, she's just a nobody. Uh, she's still, she's not a Mary Sue in this, which is great. I was kind of very happy that they just went, yeah, she's not a Mary Sue, but it kind of brings up the question, how the fuck was she a Mary Sue in the first one? Like, she, her, her parents are literally just two freighter pilots that were really fucking drunk and they sold her for booze. That's it. Well, again, third one could change all that and it could be like a red herring saying, this is what it was, but guess what? It's different. But it's like, what? What? So how was she so perfect in the first one? And they bring up the whole fact, like, Kylo lost to her in the first one. It's like, how? Like, they don't really explain that. And it's like, oh yeah, she's just force sensitive and stuff. They they basically, this, this film is interesting because it throws out a lot of Star Wars and basically went, yeah, fuck you. Yeah. It's, it's, on one hand, it's really ballsy and really interesting. On the other hand, it's like, I don't know. Like, this is why I think this is going to be one of those very divisive films. It is definitely going to be a divisive film. I did enjoy it. Ah, but just some of the things. I'm, it's not the sort of film I wished we got, which is funny. Um, but it is the sort of film that I'm happy we got because it was so different from Episode 7 that I love it. Like, fuck Episode 7. Worst Star Wars film, still, for me. For me, and I'm sure there'll be people saying this is going to be the last, this is going to be the worst one. I'm, I'm, I'm betting on it. There are people out there that hate it. I don't agree that it's the best Star Wars film. I think, but considering how the next episode nine goes, it could definitely be up there with Revenge of the Sith and Empire Strikes Back. It's close. It's very close for me. Um, but we'll have to see how the ramifications of what happens go on. Uh, great send send off to you know Carrie Fisher it was fantastic. I'm not going to lie, and seeing Carrie and her brother together somewhat. I loved. I absolutely loved. But, yeah. Overall, it's a good film, but it's very divisive. Another thing is, there's a, one thing I kind of hated was there's a lot of jokes. Probably more so than Episode 7. And some of them were cool, and some of them were really dumb. And I'm like, the fuck is this? What the fuck? Um, but, yeah. I'm still reeling. I'm still thinking. I might see it again. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But it's definitely better than Episode 7. But be warned, it's very divisive. Of course, if you've watched the spoiler part of this video, you've probably seen the film already, or just don't care. Anyway, I was invited out. I liked it. I'd give it a 9, possibly a 10, depending how episode 9 goes. Anyway, I was invited out. So, Val, bye.